Hello, and welcome to my presentation of what's new in house deploying. Before I begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Dana Alfassi. I'm a backend developer in the infra team. My main focus is on the over the engine area. I'm a maintainer of house deploy and upgrade and a co-maintainer of Ansible Runner Service. In my free time, I like everything about training, traveling the world, and music. Since the last two are not available at the moment, it's mostly crossfitting for me, as you can see in the picture on the right, where I do a dumbbell snatch, and some money. Today, I'm going to talk about the new changes we've made to the host deploy process. I will start with a brief summary of how things were up until today and our motivation for change. I will give some background on Ansible and Ansible Runner Service and explain how we use its benefits to solve some integration problems. I will show you the additions we've made to the logging area, both in house deploy and upgrade, and also introduced a new log of Ansible Runner service. All these will help further with troubleshooting. Lastly, I will play a short demo of how the hot deploy process looks like today. While watching this presentation, please feel free to drop any questions or notes in the chat. So let's begin. I want to start with a demo of the old host deploy. We're starting by entering the host information. And now the deployment process begins. We're moving to the events tab. While they are being executed, we can see the different stages of the different plugins. Now we can see that some Ansible host deployed playbook execution has started, but we can't see exactly what is being executed. And finally, the deploy ended and the host is set to up. We also had the host deploy log. Most of it looked like what we see here. Kind of messy and not that easy to understand. Okay, so host deploy up until 4.4 was based on a topic, a highly custom automation framework that was written in Python by over developers several years ago. So a question that you may ask is why would we move the whole deploy process, which was working just fine, to Ansible? And there are a few reasons for that. First, 
using Utopi had some disadvantages. It was hard for users to add their own plugins. Nevertheless, understanding the existing code. As opposed to that, Ansible is easy to understand, which makes it easier for users to write their own rules. In addition, Ansible was already used in several places in our system. As we saw in host deploy, and we also use it in host API. This made, made it even more natural, moving the whole process to Ansible as well. I want to emphasize at this point that from the user's perspective, nothing has changed. The host deploy process is the same as it was, and changing its implementation is transparent for them. Also, the users can follow the executed task just the same as before in the events. I hope I got you intrigued and enthusiastic about this change, just as I was when I was working on it. But for those of you who are not that familiar with Ansible, I would like to go over some of its properties. Ansible is an open source IT configuration and automation platform provided in-house. It is very easy to set up and use. It uses human readable YAML templates. Ansible is agentless. This means that it doesn't install software on the node that it manages. This removes a potential failure, security vulnerability, and it also saves system resources. The way that Ansible works is that it pushes programs to its managed host. These can be physical servers, virtual machines, or cloud instances. The control node must be a unit system and have Python installed on it. Also, only the control node has to have Ansible installed on it. Finally, Ansible is idempotent. The modules we run express the desired state of a system. Ansible being impotent means that we can run the playbook multiple times without having a negative effect upon the system. It will either put the system in the desired state or do nothing if the system was already in the desired state. Ansible Runner is a Python library that helps interacting with Ansible. It is responsible for running Ansible and Ansible playbook tasks. For example, commands that would be run from the command line would look like Ansible-M ping. This command tests if a connection to the nodes can be established with a ping module. All stands for all of the nodes in the inventory, which is a file where all of the nodes that can be accessed by Ansible are listed. Ansible playbook, followed by a playbook name, would run a playbook. That is a file written in YAML that contains instruction for Ansible of what to do when it connects to each machine. 
possible by default connects to the nodes over SSH. But a connection can be established by specifying a username and password as well. Then it executes the prescribed modules on them. This actually caused the host deploy process to take a long running time. That is because each module execution requires an SSH connection to the node that it runs on. We solved that issue by adding some facts to increase the open SSH channel connection. Let's look at the code snippet taken from the other host deploy BDSM role. We're looking here at two tasks. Each task has a name and the actual model that we want to execute. In the first task, we'll be verifying that a certain package is present. If it isn't, it will be installed. In the second task, we're running a shell command, then saving its output to a variable. The tag that you see below is to ignore that running commands via shell isn't the best practice in Ansible. So you see how easy it is to read and understand. Moreover, it takes a lot less of coding lines. As each playbook run ends, a summary of the playbook results is created. We're looking here at the end results of a host deploy execution. In this summary, we can see the number of tasks that ran, how many actually made changes to the host, and more interesting, if any task failed, if there were unreachable hosts, tasks that were skipped, rescued, or ignored. Failed tasks and unreachable hosts are situations we deal with. A proper error message containing a relevant log path will be displayed in the audit log. We were able to do that by using the Ansible Runner service, which is practically Ansible Runner with REST API configured with Apache. We use it for executing the playbooks, adding hosts to the inventory, gathering facts about the play, logging the information to a specific file, etc. The Ansible service is what allows us to parse the different tasks and show them just as before in the UI. One thing you should know regarding Ansible Runner service is about its configuration file. The configuration file is held at slash etc slash Ansible Runner service slash config dot yaml. It holds playbook dir, which is where the users can find all of the playbooks that are being executed and the SSH key, private key path. This file is already configured for you and doesn't need to be modified. That is, unless something really bad happens. And that leads us to talk about some troubleshooting. So in case 
anything went wrong, you will find a proper error message directing you to a log file. We have three different log files. Two of them are for Ansible host deploy and upgrade, and located on slash var slash log slash overt engine slash host deploy. We also have a new log for Ansible runner service issues, and this can be found under slash var slash log slash overt engine. These paths don't, don't need to be remembered. According to the error type, a proper error message containing the, the correct log path will be presented to you. Let's look at some examples and see the error message given by Ansible. This log output we're looking at is of host upgrade. The fail task can be found easily by searching for failed keyword. And here we can see the failure message. Once we fix that issue that arise, we can run the playbook again. Now, all of the tasks that ran up until this point won't make any changes in the next run. That is because Ansible is idempotent. For Ansible runner service issues, we have a proper error message as well. So let's investigate the log file. I showed you before the configuration file. In this case, as you can see, the playbook root dir variable has an invalid path set to it. Fixing the path and restarting the Ansible runner service will resolve this issue. Now, I would like to show you a short demo of the new host deploy process. So again, entering the host information. And moving to the events tab. The Ansible playbook execution has begun. And as you can see in 4.4, as each task has finished its execution, it is added as a new event on the list with its task name so that you can tell exactly what operation was executed. Host deploy ended and the host was set to up. We can also see the new log. We can see what happened in each task. We can see that this task had made changes to the host and that it finished successfully. To sum up this presentation, I would like to give a quick review of what I talked about today. I gave a brief introduction 
on how host deploy was implemented up until over at 4.4 and the reasons for changing it. I introduced Ansible and Ansible runner service. I discussed some of the obstacles we had when using Ansible, such as lots of SSH connections that made host deploy run for a long time, and of Ansible giving a running summary but not a visual timeline. I also explained and showed how we were able to solve these issues by adding some flags to the SSH configurations which made the execution faster and by using Ansible Runner service to parse the events so that we could display them just as it was before and not just having the titles of Ansible Playbook Execution has started and finished as we had in the earlier version. I introduced the new and different logs we created for host deploy, host upgrade, and Ansible runner service, which depend on where the error occurred. I also showed how these errors can be easily found and be fixed. I hope you enjoyed this talk. If you would like to continue discussing or have some further questions, I'll be available on the next hour over the Blue Jeans meeting. Feel free to contact me by email as well. Thank you.